Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to talk about my five favorite late winter or early spring fragrant flowering plants. I've left a couple things off of this list that are uh, very fragrant and uh, bloom in this, in this time slot, uh, but, but have some invasive uh, tendencies. One of those things being winter honeysuckle, uh, which I had in my, at, at the old house and was able to control uh, in my yard by uh, cutting it down occasionally and uh, you know staying on top of it but it does like I say it does have some invasive tendencies and in this neighborhood I'm in now where invasives have just been allowed to run amok uh, it does come up in the woods and that kind of thing so I left it off the list uh, Mahonia but not all Mahonia um, have invasive uh, tendencies I've got a Marvel Mahonia back here uh, that really does not and it's been very long bloomed it's been blooming all winter long and it's uh, super fragrant over here, but some Mahonia do have invasive tendencies. And so again, left them off the list. So let's get started on the five that are on the list. I've done several Daphne Adora videos lately, one container planting a Daphne, and then another video planting three other varieties uh, into my yard. So I've got the uh, species Daphne Adora, and then I've got uh, Aura Marginata, which has the outside variegation, and then I've got Aura Marginata white, uh, or Alba, sorry, that has the uh, white uh, flowers. And then I got one, the one in containers called Wild Winter. Beautiful, beautiful uh, shrubs that get two and a half, three feet uh, in, in height, typically in the landscape and a little bit wider. They can reach five or six feet tall if you let them just continue to grow. Can be a little short-lived. I've said that in all the Daphne videos, but there is nothing, and I mean nothing, uh, that beats that kind of uh, um, fruity, uh, late winter fragrance uh, that a Daphne Adora can give you in the landscape. Plant it high and it won't die um, is, is the philosophy there uh, to make sure you don't end up with them over watered. Second on my list is Edgeworthia and uh, I've got Edgeworthia chrysantha uh, planted in my front yard. Very small plant right now. Um, those can get uh, pretty sizable uh, in the future. Six by six in the landscape. Um, I, I see them about that big. They can get quite a bit larger. Uh, in the wild. Great plants. Uh, flowers kind of upside down and uh, it's kind of interesting. You have to go over and, and flip them over but the buds look like they're going to be white and then they open yellow on the on the species um, Chrysantha. Uh, there are other um, there are other named cultivars as well that are you know orangey red and that kind of thing. But Edgeworthia amazing scent. Uh, it'll stop you in your tracks if you walk uh, past one in the late winter or early spring. Next up on my list is right here uh, behind me. This is Osmanthus fragrance. And this, these three Osmanthus fragrance that I have back here, which are in full flower right now, they've been blooming since October. And uh, because I've had a mild winter, they, they literally never stopped. Uh, normally, when we reach kind of the height of the cold in January, uh, they'll stop flowering and then they'll start back up um, whenever, you know, whenever that breaks again and the nighttime temperatures come up a little. But because we never went below like 22 this whole winter, uh, they've never stopped flowering. Amazing, amazing scent. One thing on all five of these things that's kind of funny, these plants that bloom in the late winter, early spring, uh, in the morning when it's cool outside, they have very little fragrance on them. Uh, usually it's on a kind of a mild afternoon where they will really fill the air up uh, with that scent. So sometimes I can come out here and smell this osmanthus, put my nose right down on it in the early morning like I'm shooting this right now and not smell it. Middle of this afternoon, almost hard to be close to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's so fragrant. So that's kind of an interesting thing and that's true on all five of these things. Next up on my list is a uh, Sarcococa. And recently I put up a video planting Sarcococa orientalis uh, in the front uh, yard. Uh, Sarcococa is in the boxwood family and it's got typically a really tight, uh, compact uh, growing habit. You'll see some that are very, very short and small and then some that get three feet tall, a little more gangly. But they are in the boxwood family and so they, 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 um, they're good um, tame uh, plants uh, in the landscape, uh, good for part shade or shade conditions. Bloom in the late winter, early spring. Again, it's that same kind of thing. I can never smell the thing in the morning in the afternoon it's just full of fragrance there's 11 i think 11 species of sarcococa like i say i have orientalis in my front yard i will probably acquire a few of the uh, others uh, at some point just because the flower timing one of the one of the things with if i get different species um, i can get different flower timing so i can extend the period of time i have those fragrant flowers 
because uh, the sarcococcus is not the longest uh, blooming of the shrubs um, you know, I have on this list. Actually, the shortest thing I have on this list is the last thing and one of my all-time absolute favorites, which is a flowering apricot or prunus mume. Um, Brie Arthur's got, I think, five or six in her yard that I was filming uh, recently, there's uh, one in my neighborhood that's at an old friend's house who, who passed away not that long ago, but it's an absolutely beautiful tree. Uh, lots of varieties of Prunus Mume. Um, the J.C. Ralston Arboretum in Raleigh has a great collection of them. But you better go quick every year because once they start blooming, uh, it's over in a hurry. It's really our first flowering tree here uh, in my area in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Last year, spring broke early or warm temperatures broke early and they were done blooming by the end of January. This year it was a little cooler and so they actually still have some flowers on them here in early March. So it's really timed based on when, you know, when, when that soil temperature hits, you know, the sweet spot. We're on to other flowering cherries and things uh, at this point. But Prunus Mume, definitely my number one all-time late winter, early spring, fragrant flowering a uh, tree or shrub or anything. Uh, the one down the street from me uh, at my old friend's house, uh, you can smell it a block and a half away before you get there. Uh, it's almost overwhelming by the time you get there. Um, it's really sweet, uh, really sweet uh, fragrance. You just can't imagine a tree could produce that kind of smell. So there you go. There's my top five and a couple I left off just because they have some invasive uh, tendencies. If there's something uh, that you really love that's a fragrant thing that's in the late winter or early spring, uh, let me know uh, down below this video or tell me which of the ones that I named is your favorite. Thanks for watching. You want to be on the video today, as always? Okay, all right. You on the video? Somehow you always get in the video.